Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve subarray sum equals k. So simply we are given an array of integers nums and we are given a target integer k and we want to return the total number of contiguous subarrays which sum up to the value k. This is our target value. So how many continuous subarrays sum up to two? Well, we have one subarray with the first two elements and then we have a second subarray with the last two elements. That's two. How many different subarrays sum up to target value three? Well, we have one subarray from the beginning and then we have another subarray at the end. Now let's think about the brute force approach first. That's gonna be n squared. Why is it gonna be n squared? Because we have n squared different subarrays inside of the array. So if we just check every single subarray, right, we start here, is this uh, sum up to the target k? Nope, okay, does this sum up to the target k? Yes, it does. And then we check the entire thing. Does this sum up to the target k? Nope, it doesn't. And then we can start over here. Does this sum up to the target? Nope. Does this sum up to the target? Yes. And then we can go here. Does this sum up to the target? No, it does not. And then we're done, right? So we checked every single separate. That's n squared time. And then your next thought might be, okay, n squared, maybe we can, we can improve that. Maybe we can use two pointers. Maybe we can even do a sliding window. So for example, this is our first subarray, right? It's too small, so we add values. This is our next subarray. It's the perfect size. This is our, our next subarray, and this is too big. So what would we want to do then? Well, maybe we could try, you know taking the left part and moving it right moving our left pointer here because we want to decrease the size or the total sum of the window after you read the constraints you'll know that that's not possible the reason why is because the values in nums could be negative so just by adding a value to our subarray like adding another value doesn't guarantee we're increasing the size and removing a value doesn't guarantee that we're decreasing the size because some of the values could be negative now it still is possible to improve the brute force solution into an a linear time solution and it's not super intuitive but you can use the brute force solution as some intuition to to get to the better solution so that's kind of what i'm going to try to explain and then once you know it the code is actually pretty easy to write so let's kind of go through that intuition now so yes, we are going to be using a hash map in this problem where the key value is going to be the prefix sum and the value of the hash map is going to be the count of how many times that particular prefix sum occurs. But let me actually run through why that's going to work for us. So we see that the target value is k. So let's try out the brute force approach. So we're going to first start at this subarray, right? Just one value. Our sum so far is one. Then we're going to do the first two values the sum so far is two then we're going to add a third value now the sum so far is three right so we found one subarray right we can kind of keep track of that we have one subarray so far next we are going to go to this part the the fourth element right now our sum is four and of course we're going to do the same thing for the remainder right this is going to be five this is going to be six etc but let's just notice a tiny bit of repeated work we're doing. Next, I'm gonna start over here at the second element, right? Brute force it from here. So, so far we have one. Now we have two, we added a third, uh, second element. And now we added a third element. So yes, now we reached the target, right? This is some K. So we can add another one to our total, the number of subarrays we found with K, right? The first one was these three elements. The next one is these three elements. But notice how we we computed this entire sum, right? When we're computing these three values, we're basically doing a ton of repeated work that we just did, right? So how could we have gotten this three sum a little bit quicker, right? These three values summed together a little bit quicker. Well, when we were over here, right, when we had iterated through these first four elements, we could have just said, okay, take the entire sum minus the first prefix right just the first value minus that that would have given us three right but if we're trying to compute every single subarray right because we know the next go around when we iterate through the loop we're going to be starting at this value right so, and then eventually we're going to get to a subarray like this so when we, when we were going through it the first time with this blue portion we could have gotten this pretty easily as well we could have just taken the entire sum minus the first two values which is a prefix of the array right 
But that's also brute force, right? We're not doing anything better. All we're doing is still creating every single subarray. So is there some intuition we can use? Can we somehow be a little bit greedier? Notice how when we've gotten this subarray, our sum so far is equal to four, right? So what we're looking for in other words is can we chop off some prefix of this array, of this entire array, can we chop off a prefix such that we can make this sum match K? The answer is yes, because we can calculate it, right? Our sum is four, so let's get sum minus K. K, which is going to be 4 minus 3, which is 1, right? So we know that so far the entire sum is 4. If we can chop off a prefix of 1, we will still have a contiguous subarray, right, that will exactly match K. Now the only question is, does there exist a prefix in this subarray, right, not in the entire array, does there exist a prefix in this portion, starting at the beginning that we can remove, because remember, we want a contiguous subarray. Can we chop off a prefix that has an exact value of one? Well, we can if we maintain a count of it, right? If, we, if every time we compute a prefix, if we add it to our hash map and count how many prefixes have a value of one. And the reason we're counting is because, remember, since we could have possibly negative values, like this could have been a negative one, there could be multiple prefixes that have a prefix of one. Because, you know, this is one prefix that sums up to one. This is another prefix that sums up to one, right? Because we have a negative one in the middle. So that's why we have to count the numbers. But... Also one thing, we can't just go on and compute every prefix before we actually start building up our result. We have to do it simultaneously, right? Because if we just compute every single prefix, then when we get, you know, when we're at this point, right? We're trying to get, okay, how many prefixes have just a sum of one? Well, if we have gotten every single prefix already, then that'll have been added to our hash map. We might end up removing a prefix like this, right? We can't do that. We're not allowed to do that. When we're at this portion, we only want to remove prefixes that are a subarray of this, right? And of course, we don't want to remove the entire array because it's possible our K value could actually be zero, in which case we don't want every, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to take this and say, okay, remove the entire thing. That sums up to zero. And there's one last edge case we have to worry about. So let's say our K is three, right? Once we've gotten to this point, we, our sum is three, right? So we're going to take three minus three, which is equal to zero, right? At this point, we don't have any prefixes with a sum of zero. So what we're going to say is, okay, since no prefix has a sum of zero, right? Then we're not going to end up updating our result, but we don't want to do that. So as a base case, what we're going to say is to our prefix sum, we're going to add a zero value and say that the count is one. Basically, we're saying there is a prefix, you know, the empty prefix that has a sum of zero. So now let me walk you through the algorithm. It's going to be a linear time algorithm. I'm going to change this to a negative one just to make the problem a little bit more interesting. So we're going to start at the beginning, add every single value that we can to our array on each iteration, add that to the sum. And every time we compute a prefix, after we are done updating our result potentially, that's when we're going to go ahead and add that prefix to the prefix map. So we start at the first value, we get a sum of one, one minus three is negative two. Does negative two exist in our prefix map? Nope, it does not. So we continue. But before we continue, we're going to take this prefix that we just computed one and add it to our prefix map. So prefix of one has a count of one so far. Next, we are going to get the next value. So now we have a sum of zero. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Do we have a negative 3 in our prefix map that we can potentially remove from this array that would give us the total sum of the array as being the target? Nope, we do not. So we continue, but before we continue, we see, okay, we computed a prefix of sum 0. So let's increment the count of prefix of sum 0. So this is now going to be a 2. And now we're going to add the third element to our sum. So now we're going to have a sum of positive 1. So we're going to take 1 minus the k value 3, negative 2. Does a negative 2 exist in our prefix map? Nope, it does not. But we can say that, okay, we computed a sum of 1 again, right? So now we can take the sum, the prefix sum of 1, and say that there's two different prefixes, this one and this one, that sum up to 1. 
And we're just going to continue. So at the next iteration, now we have a sum of 2. 2 minus k is going to be negative 1. Do we have a negative 1 in our prefix? Not just yet. So let's continue. And now we add the fifth element. So now we have a sum of 3, right? So we're going to take 3 minus k, which is also 3, right? And we're going to get 0. Do we have a prefix sum of 0? Finally, we do. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the count, the number of prefixes that we had that summed to 0 and say, okay, there's two different ways that we can create a subarray of k. So we're going to take our result, which is initially 0, increment it by 2. But hold on, what did we just do? Let's think about it for a second. We said, okay, the entire sum of this subarray is equal to three. And we said, okay, three minus K is zero. That means we need to remove a zero sum subarray from this subarray to get us to the target value, right? So one subarray is, okay, if we, if we remove, you know, an empty subarray, right? Why does that work? Because take a look, this is a subarray that sums up to three, right? That's the obvious one. So that's where our two comes from, right? So far we have one of the two ways, but let's continue. There's another subarray, this subarray, subarray, right? That has a sum of zero. So if we remove this subarray from our, you know, original subarray, then we're removing zero from the subarray. So this sum stays as zero. So this is the second subarray that sums up to three that we have found that ends at this position. So great. So our result so far is two. And don't forget this subarray had a sum of three. So let's say one prefix has a sum of three so far. And next, we're finally at the last iteration of the loop. So now our sum is 4. 4 minus k, which is 3, is going to be positive 1. So how many prefix sums do we have with sum of positive 1? We have 2, so that means we're going to add 2 to our result. Because what we're saying is ending at this position, how many subarrays could we get that sum up to 3? Well, we because the total sum of this is 4, and we know that we have two prefix sums that start here that sum up to 1, we can remove two different prefixes that will make this equal to 3. We can remove this prefix, right? That's one prefix that sums up to 1. And then when you look at this, this is this sums up to the target 3. We can move remove another prefix sum. Remember, this also sums up to 1. If we remove this, then we also have a pref we also have a subarray that sums up to 3. So we have two different subarrays that end at this position that sum up to the target 3. And once we've done that, we've iterated through the entire array once we're done, right? We, we did an exhaustive approach. So we ended up getting a result of four. There's four different subarrays in this entire thing that can sum up to three. So obviously it's a linear time solution as well as linear memory because we're using this hash map. But that being said, now we can jump into the code and the code is pretty easy once you can figure this out. So we are going to have a result variable, which initially is going to be zero. We're also going to maintain the current sum, which is initially going to be zero as well. And we're also going to have a hash map. Let's call it prefix sums. And it's not going to initially be empty. Remember, we have a base case of zero. Uh, we have a single prefix sum that sums up to zero. So that's what we're going to say, like, you know, the empty subarray. And then we're going to go through every single value in the input array add it to the current sum, right? We want to know what the current sum is. And then we want to know what's the difference that we're looking for. The difference is current sum minus K, because we know if we can remove a prefix sum of size diff, then we can find a potential result. And we could have multiple prefix sums that sum up to diff. So we want to take that and add it to the result. So we're going to say result dot add to it whatever prefix dot get it, uh, sum up to diff now it's possible that this diff does not exist in prefix sums and in python you can return a default value of zero if this diff does not exist in prefix sums and then after we do that that's when we want to add to prefix sums the current sum that we just computed so prefix sums at position diff or the key value diff we want to say one plus whatever it already is so let's copy and paste this oh and by the way, it's actually not diff we're computing the current sum right that's what our prefix sum is right now current sum and this also can be changed to current sum 
So with this line, all we're doing is just incrementing the number of prefix sums that have this particular sum value. And believe it or not, this is the entire solution, right? We only have to iterate through the entire array once, maintaining some hash map. And as you can see, the solution is pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. It's not a very easy problem, even though the code is pretty short and easy. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.